Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about how I was introduced to Formula One. As you can see, I'm wearing my Alphatari um, hoodie. Yes, I really like this hoodie. It's so cool. Yes, um, but I will be talking about how I was introduced to Formula One, how I came to play the game, how I came to watch it, and how I came to learn about it not just the sport, like learning about the sport itself and also learning how to play it and going from basically someone who just had zero knowledge to a little bit more knowledge than before. So, to start off, you're probably wondering how someone like me will even get into racing and things like that because originally I was not. So yes, Formula One is racing. It originates from the UK. Yeah, so it originated from the UK and um, my boyfriend's the one who introduced it to me because he's a really big Formula One fan. Like he, he loves Formula One. So he did introduce it to me and that's how I became familiar with it and came to watching it, playing it, and basically uh, just learning more about it and becoming more educated on how it all works. Uh, so I started playing, I believe I started playing in August of 2020. So right during the pandemic when everything was kind of, sh everything was pretty much still shut down. We had the shelter in place and uh, we couldn't really go anywhere, so my boyfriend, who actually wasn't my boyfriend at the time, uh, he was just my really good uh, friend during that time, but I'll get into that. That's another story for another time, but uh, basically he introduced it to me and was saying, oh, you know, why don't we, like, would you be up for playing Formula 1? And I said, that's racing, uh, from what I gather, but I didn't really know much about it. And, and then when I thought about, oh, it's a racing game, I'm not sure if I really like this because I'm not really into racing. I wasn't really into racing games to begin with. The only ones I'd ever really played before were Mario Kart and Need for Speed when I was a lot younger. And even then, I was really bad at them. Like when it comes to games uh, that I really suck at, I don't like to show that I suck at the game. So I avoid playing them, just so that other people who are super pro at it just won't see how bad I am at it. Because I don't like showing people that I suck at games. Now I don't even care. But before, it was a really, it was a really, like, it made me really self-conscious to show, oh my goodness, I suck at this game. But fortunately, uh, he was really, um, he's not like the type of person who's super competitive about that type of thing. He won't get on your back if you're really bad at it. bad at it. I'm not even gonna say, oh my gosh, wow, I just got dark in here. I hope that didn't affect my lighting too much. But um, it's like he's not the type of person to be in your face about being really bad at it because you know you start as a beginner in a, in a lot of different things. Not even just this. You start as a beginner and you're not gonna be good at something. When you're trying something for like the first time, you're not gonna be good at it. So he was really supportive about that. And he had some friends that played it as well and they were really good too. Um, and really nice about playing. They didn't care about whether you this was our first, your first time playing or your skill level or anything like that. We're just driving to have fun. So that was a really cool thing. I really liked that about it. So anyways, we started playing around the time that the pandemic was happening and so I, I just started with what's called full assists, meaning that you have a a braking, oh not a braking, you have braking assists so when you get up to a curve on the track it'll kind of tell you when you're supposed to break and kind of break for you so you don't really have to think too hard about it. That was one thing and then also it had a it has a racing line. So you'll see a line throughout the whole time you're on the track and I can actually show an example of it um, where you'll have a line that helps guide you so you know okay this is where I'm supposed to go so that way you know it, it won't be like me for the first time I'm running off track I don't know where I'm going I'm running into walls I'm spitting out onto the grass and all that so that was really good 
Fulls, this is really helpful, especially when you're first starting. And also, the line has three different colors to kind of represent um, the speed in which, or like basically when you, when, you, when you should be braking and when you should be actually just going full throttle. So I'll show that too. It's like a green, yellow, and red, and red obviously means you're braking at, the, at like different corners of the track and things like that. So I can show a little bit of that as well. So I went on full assist for the first time and just drove. Basically, the only thing you have to pay attention to is the throttle and like just accelerating forward and then turning when you're supposed to turn and then that's pretty much pretty much it. It's there's not a lot like you're just driving, but it's doing a lot of the work for you. So you don't have to think about all the other things that come in with driving. So I eventually so after I got used to playing it. I moved on to semi-assist and I believe during that time I actually turned off part of the racing line so I didn't have the full racing line. I had it, I tried it where it would only show up when I'm making turns on the track and not when I'm on other parts of the track where I'm just going straight because I felt like I didn't really need it at that point, but it's still really helpful to have because it'll still tell you, okay, yeah, you want to break here. Um, and I still had, I think, what was it? Breaking, breaking assists, meaning that it would break, it would, it would break for me automatically. So I won't have to worry, okay, what part do I break at? Things like that. And then let's see, 20, 2020, I started watching it. So in October of 2020, which um, is when I started actually watching it, and this was completely new to me. I didn't know anything. I didn't know anyone. So whenever uh, my boyfriend would mention names of the drivers or like what's happening, I'd just be sitting there and watching and just thinking, I don't know what's happening. So it was kind of like, you're just kind of watching it, but then none of it's really getting absorbed. You're not really fully paying attention just because you don't know what's happening and that goes for basically anything. So when I, when I watch like sports and things like that, if I don't know how the game works, like I just, I'll just be, I'll be watching it, but then I won't understand anything. So that kind of, it, it was like, okay, cool. I'll watch this and then I'll try to see eventually um, how it goes and yeah, so I watched it for a little bit, but it wasn't until I started watching it long term and watching more races that I started to kind of understand what was going on. And I think what really helped was uh, he recommended that I basically play the game and then practice on the track that's going to be coming up in the next race because they have a race pretty much every either every weekend or they'll have one on one weekend and then they'll skip like a week and then they'll have another weekend depending on you know the timing and the month and everything like that so we got into a rhythm of racing on the track that would be next coming up next and so it helped me familiarize myself with the layout of the track and so then that way when I saw it in like live on TV I knew all right this is the track that I already am familiar with that I've already raced on and I already know it so it made it that much more interesting to watch because I knew what I was looking at versus if it was a track I'd never seen before then it's like okay I can't really connect with it as well so that was a really good way of really familiarizing myself and educating myself now I found that there are some tracks that I really like and then tracks I really don't like. So that's really funny. Um, and then later on, it wasn't until this year, earlier this year in February, that I went f uh, no assist. So I, it all started in Australia and I'm going to see if I can find some clips on that as well. But basically no assist, meaning that I didn't have any racing line, I didn't have brake, brake assist, and had to put more thought into where I'm going to brake on the track and controlling the throttle and braking so that way I wouldn't spin out because 
once you're on no assists and it's like a completely different method of driving i spun out so much the first time i was off it it was literally it's basically like you're taking training wheels off of a bike and then just praying you don't fall off in the beginning so i took a sis off and all of a sudden I just have no control anymore. I'm sliding all over the place and my car is just going everywhere. And I'm thinking, okay, I don't, I don't like no assist. No assist is really hard. I want to go back to assist. But then I thought, no, I'm going to keep, I'm going to push this. And he was like, he was really supportive during that too, to, you know, wanting to see me uh, challenge myself. And that was a good way of challenging myself. So. I got through that. That was pretty funny, actually. I wish I had clips from that. I don't know if I do or not. I have to look back. And uh, but that was really funny. So yeah, no assist. And then, as I got to that part of it, it helped me understand. Okay, so this is how the racing works, and I can kind of understand all the lingo that comes with it too. So. There were a lot of things I didn't know, a lot of words I didn't know, like the term chicane, I didn't even know what that was, and the term sausage, I didn't know what that was either. So, and there's probably a ton of other terms too that I can't think of off the top of my head right now, but yeah. That's basically how I got into Formula 1 and got to playing it, and it's actually, it's pretty cool. I. Now I'm in the process of, at some point, I'll move on to completely manual, which means I will have no, no more assist at all because I'm still driving automatic right now. So I don't have to worry about gear shifting or anything like that. But once I move on to manual, that's gonna be really difficult, I think. And also he's been trying to convince me to get a wheel. And in my head, I'm, I'm thinking, hmm, maybe. But for right now, I've been using my Xbox controller to race. So that's been a fun time, interesting time, yeah. So yeah, I'm definitely gonna throw in some tips I've learned and probably kind of hop in uh, some of the tracks that I really like. There are two tracks I really like, which I don't know if I mentioned before or not. If I did, then well, I'm mentioning it again. Uh, two tracks I really liked, which were uh, Australia and Azerbaijan. I like both of those. The tracks that I hate, well, don't hate, I just really dislike them. Like, I disliked in Monaco and I dislike um, Singapore. Uh, why? Because it's the layout of the track and why they're, they're so difficult to navigate through that it's pretty much, it's, it's really difficult to get a good time. Like, I can't seem to get a good time on, on those for whatever reason. But I'll definitely share some tips along the way that I've learned as well as uh, I actually am thinking uh, what would be cool because I do watch the races every month uh, or every every weekend that there's a race I'll watch it or we yeah we watch it together and I think that having reviews and talking about what happened in the race would be pretty cool too pretty cool too so I might do that as well. Um, but yeah, I think that that is where I'm going to end it for now. This is how I became a Formula One person fan. I, I'm, 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 I'm familiarizing myself with it. It's pretty cool. Also, we got, I wanted to share that we got our Williams hats. I think if I can just, yeah, hopefully that focuses, but we got our Williams hats on, or our hats and we're really looking forward to next year because uh, our favorite driver, Alex Albon, is coming back to Formula One 2022 and he's gonna be Williams Racing. So that's gonna be really awesome, which means we will be getting more gear at some point. But this is, this is a nice hat, I like it. Yeah. Which fun, we have AlphaTauri gear too. So it's like two different teams, we're rooting for two different teams, but yeah. Pretty cool. Um, yeah, looking forward to talking to you guys again about 
things, uh, everything, everything uh, that I've learned in Formula One so far, and just sharing my knowledge. And if anybody else out there who is, you know, thinking about playing it or thinking about watching it, you know, they can get a perspective from someone who started out completely brand new with no knowledge whatsoever and kind of see, you know, how I got to where I'm at right now. So yeah, anyways, I will talk to you guys again soon and definitely um, if you enjoyed watching this, like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in my next video.